What's up? It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles live. Sponsored by Fryette Amplification, New York Hardcore Comics, and now the Organic Grill. Listen, I could have sat watching. I'm a big Jimi Hendrix fan. I'm a big lover of Jimi Hendrix. So I'm excited to have this guest on today who was very much influenced by Jimi Hendrix. So uh, I could have sat there watching him play Machine Gun for pretty much the whole show. I kind of forgot I was doing a show, you know? So how's everybody doing? Let me see what we got going on here. Got a, we're going to have a great show today. Sometimes, sometimes I have a routine here when I do these shows, right? And sometimes everything leading up to the show is a little scattered. And, uh, and sometimes I got a good feeling about it. I got a good feeling about today's show. I really do. What's happening? What's happening? Yes, that is true. What's up, Rich Zoller? Hope you're well. Vox Sarge, what's up, Vinny? How you doing? How's everybody out there? Wendy Sue, how do you do? How are you, dear? Nice to hear from everybody around the world. Looking forward to it. Okay, got a couple upcoming shows coming up uh, on Sunday. This Sunday, we have the one, the only, the very controversial Michael Graves, former singer for the Fit Miss, and uh, should be interesting. We'll try to stay away from politics. We always do. Because, you know, like we talked about, 
I'm not running a political show here. I started the show as an alternative to having to see this fucking bullshit on TV. And I use that as a blanket blanket term, this bullshit. So try to steer away from that. Uh, coming up, coming up next week, uh, after Graves on Wednesday, we have my old pal, Dave Smalley, who I was in the trenches with back in the day. And uh, that should be good. And then we have Lukey Luke from Gorilla Biscuits and Warzone. That's a week from today. So everybody needs to tune in. Tune in for that. Tune in for that. What else? Who else is checking in? Hey, Steen in Denmark. I hope you're well, buddy. Um, great shirt. Yo, representing the pitchfork. New York Yankees pitchfork. Mashup. There you go. I want to thank Pitchfork uh, for being a part of the show and for sending some clothes that fit me down here since I've put on a bunch of weight during the zombie apocalypse. There you go, David Goldberg. As my father always said, it's all bullshit. Yes. Politics. Yep. Yep. Joe Bruno, how are you, buddy? No, I'm not back in New York yet. I'm coming back on Monday. Monday, I'll be back. The first show that I am doing uh, from New York is going to be Dave Smalley on Wednesday. So we're all looking for that. Hey, Nick in Derby, UK. I hope you're well, buddy. And thank you for thank you for stopping by to watch the show. Appreciate that. Um, okay, so let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving and grooving. Um, let's see if I need to I got anything in my notes here. Ah, just the usual shit. So let, 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 let's keep it, let's keep it going. Um, let's bring on Steven Messina and let's do photo of the day. What's up, bro? What's up? What's up? How are you, pal? How you doing? Not too bad. Oh, is it not too bad? Is it going to be one of those days? Is it going to be one of those days, Steven? Well, I'm good. It's hot out. I'm in the box. Okay, you're like, coming in a little. You're a little clipped uh, up. Uh, sign out. Sign off and sign back uh, on. Uh, well, in the meantime, let's do photo of the day and let's see if uh, what we got here. If anybody, um, here we go. Let's hear your your suggestions here. Photo of the day. Huh. Let's see. Let's see. Let, let's hear. Let's hear. Yeah. It, yes, Gina. He's in the. He. He's. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I do want to use my hands too. Okay. So here we go. Um, wait. Waiting for. Uh, what is this? Ha ha! I love this. Hashtag Mark Rizzo. Hashtag Michael Graves. They are best fucking shows. A hashtag Soulfly Mom Two could ask for. Thank you. Well, hi, Jessica, and welcome to the show. You come to the right place. You with me, man? Are you with me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here we go. What do we got here? Walter. Is that Walter? Oh, that's not Walter. So you think yeah. it's trifles? I, I guess. Anybody else? Oh, good one. Todd Hamilton. Uh, is that Steve Vai? Yes, sir. Um, what else? John, is that John Taylor from Duran Duran? No, no. I know, I know what this. I know what this is, and, and, and I know I, you know what this is. I know what this is because because is... I've said it before, and 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 I'll say it again. Is that <laughs> um, a, a real key here? Is take a look at that Gibson SG. Who else do you know that played an SG like that? I found these results. Jesus. <laughs> she found these results. That's um, funny. Yeah, listen, anything goes here, including this. Is this going to ring today? All right. So who else played a Gibson SG like this? Anybody? I'll give you a clue. Frank Zappa. 
<laughs> so Frank Zappa played an SG like that. I saw him play an SG like that many times. And I could tell that that is, that is Frank Zappa's son, Dweezil Zappa, playing that guitar. It just so happens I am a big, big, big Frank Zappa fan. A big, uh, you could say I'm a Frank Zappa uh, fanatic almost. And that would be Dweezil Zappa, says Joe James, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In fact, you know, I'm I'm shocked. I expected the Central Scrutinizer to know this one. Right. I don't know if the Central Scrutinizer is on the show. So is ah. this – this is this is uh, my, my question here. Um, is, is this um, Zappa – Zappa plays Zappa? This is the first Zappa plays Zappa right. back uh, early – what was it? Maybe 2003, maybe, or it's, four. Is this at the and Beacon? Beacon Theater, yes, it is. The first right. one this is the first one they did. And the cool thing was this first one they did had Steve Vai and Terry Bozio, which was just phenomenal. I mean, I think Terry Bozio only did the first the first one and maybe the second one. Uh, and then they've gone on since then to do the Zappa Play Zappas, but this one, this was the first one. Uh, in New York City, and it was tremendous. Uh, they played. They had the big video screen where Zappa, where he played yeah. to his father. They they traded yeah, off with awesome. his dad. I saw which that. Was yeah, really, really cool. Yeah. And uh, and seeing Steve Vai and him together was awesome. And you could tell how much fun they're having. And just uh, and it's funny because you were, today we were talking about shredders, and people don't realize. Dweezil is a monster guitar player. Yeah, Dweezil's great. But he grew up in the Eddie Van Halen school, and he said he had to basically relearn how to play the guitar to try to play like his dad. Yeah. You know, which is crazy. Like when Eddie Van Halen taught you how to play guitar, and you have to try to unlearn that. So crazy Look, stuff. There's a I question. Mean, are we going to do Picks of the Grateful Dead next? Do uh -oh. I need to go into my personal archive and pull out some pictures of the Grateful Dead? Because I will. <laughs> you, I don't know about you, but I was always under the impression that hardcore didn't come with a rule book. Yeah, I fucking so. listen. I fucking love the Grateful Dead. So, so, so there you go. But anyway, back to the Dweezil thing. I saw, I saw Zappa play Zappa. It was incredible. Uh, I'm a big Frank Zappa fan. So, so there you go. Um, picture of the day. That was great. I was, and you know what? I'm, I'm, I did that one for you because I knew what. Not only were you looking for, we're looking for guitar players, but I knew how much you liked Zappa, so I knew I'd sneak that one in. Yeah, listen, you know, I, I've said many times, like, you know, Zappa was just an incredible artist, and and he broke a lot of rules, and someone like Zappa just wouldn't last. And like, I just couldn't imagine if Zappa was still around in today's environment right now. You know, it's just crazy. Oh no, they wouldn't know what to do with him. Yep. They All right, hey, let me keep it. Let me keep it rolling here. Uh, you let's got get it. Back to, let's get back to work, and uh, we'll see you in a little bit. You got it. See you, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Yo, it's the New York Hardcore Chronicles live, sponsored by uh, Fryet Amplification, New York Hardcore Comics, and now the Organic Grill. Hold your horses. Hold your horse. Hold your fucking horses. Fryette, Ampl Fryette Amplification is a small company that makes guitar amps, attenuators, and direct recording products in North Hollywood, California. Their gear is used by the Deftones, Helmet, Candiria, Stone Temple Pilots, Powerflow, Antidote, Volbeat, Downset, and many other heavy bands. The brand new Deliverance 2 heads are available now at Fryette.com. And while we're at it, New York Hardcore Comics opened back in 2013 when lifelong friends d to Pro and Lee Fairley Combine the collections and obsessions of comic books, punk rock, toys, statues, magic, the gathering, and all things horror. Horror. The horror. The store is located at 117 Main Street in lovely Dobbs Ferry, New York. If you want to support them during this pandemic, please contact them via email at newyorkhardcorecomics at gmail.com or any social media channel for an exclusive store package. $20 gets you one of each. Exclusive shop t-shirt and sticker. Marvel Comics Venom number one exclusive cover. To New York Hardcore Comics. New York Hardcore Comics. We love them. They love us. We love each other. Let me see what else is happening. Um, well, we'll get we'll get into our guest. Yeah, everybody, everybody. Listen, I, I can't, I can't, 
I can't get too much into the Zappa thing. We got to keep moving. Let's bring on Rat Bones and uh, let's do Collectible of the Day. Super excited to get our guest on here. I want to have a good time today. I need to have a good time today. You need to have a good time today. Like, like, Jimmy, like Jimmy G says in Murphy's Law, I want to have fun. You want to have fun. We all want to have fun, right? What's up, Rat Bones? What up? What's going on over there? It's the beginning of the fun. Fun. So what's up, everybody? Fun. Give a shout out to my man over here, Anthony Gutter. He's got uh, his company, Too Many Blunts. Slow Poke Rodriguez over here and Too Many Blunts logo over here. Uh, I also want to – that's uh, Too Many Blunts by Anthony Gutter, Gutter Christ Production. That's my homeboy. So I want to get into a couple toys today. I also want to give a shout out to my man, Marky Chris, who does these awesome sculpted 3D. You know, we got the bust of Ursus, which is incredible. And we got the Buddha Stormtrooper. Pretty sweet stuff. He puts out all kinds of different nostalgic shit. He's an awesome friend of mine, so I always want to represent his company. We got that. And then, sorry about that. I had a phone call coming. Sorry. What the fuck is going so, on? We're going to. That's me. To, That's me calling you on my dad's house phone. Uh, <laughs> someone else. But look, I want to show Anthony's incredible shirts real quick. This is his Too Many Blunts line, and he puts out all kinds of crazy See if I can do this right. I practiced it. He puts out crazy stuff, guys. Get with him. That's our boy. Go to Christ Productions. He's got tons of shit, guys. Another one. All right, what what is what is this? What, what, I'm just showing off my guy. He's got awesome shit. I didn't Jesus do it Christ. Right. Why don't we bring him on the show? We should get him on the show. <laughs> so listen. All right. For the star of the day, got one last toy for you. Might seem silly to some of you guys, but this is from the Masters of the Universe collection, and it's an Urco. And this guy right here is worth about five bucks. So it's really just if you like that. But this little piece here is what makes the one I got worth like 75 bucks. Because what kid wouldn't have lost all these little. So sometimes collecting is totally in the details, you know. It's got these little discs that came with them with the different villains on it. But, you know, the. To have that complete set of these discs and the little thing really makes that a cool toy. And it's got the little Skeletor on the back. So that's the toy of the day, Urko. Urko. Uh, yeah. From, uh, Not to Mac be confused with Urko from Planet of the Apes. Not to be, but we had him too. We have yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not play around though, right? What is that? Are those pogs? You know, they're just like little things that came with this action figure. You know, this guy, you pull his little zip cord ah. out and a little piece of metal floats around and he like spins around. Ah. Maybe this was part of a game, you know. But, uh, you know, collecting is cool because it's the little details that really get your money back, you know. And uh, I've got new shirts coming. And, of course, when we meet up in the park, I'm going to have this one available to do the wrap on shirt. I'll show that one last time. Can't get enough of it. You know, I hope you guys are enjoying, you know, the show. I'm enjoying it. I'm watching it as a fan as much as a friend. So great things coming. I'm interested to see what Mark's got to say today. And uh, it's been great, man. What a ride. Well, you thank know. you for being a part of it, man. Right. The, the show is the show's doing well. It's a resume, baby. And, and you're a big part of it. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, buddy. I'll talk to you in a bit. Later, guys. How? This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles live, sponsored by Fryette Amplification and New York Hardcore Comics and the Organic Grill. Live long and prosper. 
Hey, I want to thank everybody that has supported this show. You know what? I want to thank everybody that watches the show, but I really want to thank the people that support the show. Uh, I want to run uh, my Patreon banner here uh, for those that want to throw their hat in the ring, uh, so to so to speak. Uh, where the hell is all that? Here you go. There's my Patreon page. I want to invite. I want to invite. I want to thank a couple new patrons that have come on board. Uh, Vinny Doak, who's watching right now. Thank you, Steve Inamorita, Bernard uh, Reese Teixeira, Wendy Sue. Thank you for uh, for supporting the show. Agnes. Uh, out in Brooklyn, Dacia Hensley, uh, Laurent uh, Bazette in France, Susan Ant Anton, and Theresa, Cov Theresa Coviello. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me today. <laughs> but hey, thank you all. Thank you all for for uh, for jumping in and uh, for being a, a patron, a patron saint. Thank you for being a patron saint. Of Drew Stone and the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Uh, that that's the Patreon page there. Uh, go go check it out. Live long and prosper. Yep, I enjoy the fuck out of the shows or podcasts, whatever it's called. You know, I don't think it's a podcast. Um, I don't think it's a podcast. Hey, uh, I know Rizzo, you're, you're backstage watching. Whoever the fuck this Jason Copella is that is posting again and again and again and again and again about buying your shit. I got news for you, Jason. If this goes on much longer, you're going to get banned from the fucking show. And Rizzo, I'll ban you from the fucking show too if you have all your fucking kook friends flooding our, my fucking chat room with your fucking shit, dude. Here he is. I get, the guy's posted 300 times already during the show. Jesus Christ. Listen, I, I banned I banned Daryl from the bad brain. So the ban hammer. There you go. No. This is the guy that decides on who gets banned right here. Ban him. Ban him. Ban him. Ban him. Anyway, seriously, man, people, people are nuts, man. Anyway, that's what's up. Uh, let, let's, let's, uh, let me see. Am I covering all the bases here? Uh, let me, let me think real quick. Cause once we get into it, we're going to, Oh, real quick. Uh, the a seven throwback shirts. Boom. The A7 throwback shirts are now on sale. And here is the address where you could get them. The A7 throwback shirt is available at www.stonefilmsnyc.com. There it is, the A7 throwback shirt. Go check it out. Uh, limited quantity. They will be gone. Uh, they just, they just, actually, there's waiting for me in New York when I get home, and they're shipping out on Thursday. Or Wednesday. So check it out. A7 throwback shirt. Don't be scared. That said, let's get it on. Let me bring, let me make sure everybody's straight here. Munich is calling. Good. How are you, Mario? Um, laying down the law. I got it, Joe James. You know, Ronnie Wheeler, our favorite sound man from the A7. What's happening? Yep. Don't fuck with Jim. That, that's right. All right. Well, if you're in for one, they're at www.stonefilmsnyc.com. All right. Listen, a little kooky today. But listen, why not? Right? Why not? What the hell else is going on? Sweden in the house. What's happening, Christian? Thank you for stopping by. Drew, those sideburns are coming in. Where you been, bro? I've had these sideburns for a couple months already. Hey, Brian Whittemore, thanks for supporting the show. All right, I got to get my head out of my ass here and, and focus up, all right? So here we go. Today's guest is an American musician best known as the lead guitarist of metal band Soulfly and formerly of El Nino. He has featured on eight Soulfly albums. Eight. Eight. Eight's a lot. But you know what it's like to be on eight records, eight, do eight tours, eight cycles? been in this band a while and has also released four solo instrumental albums he's also a member of a cav of cavalera conspiracy a side project with the co-founders of sepultura max and igor cavalera he has also played and recorded with the misfits from lovely lodi new jersey hailing from carlstadt new jersey please welcome mr mark rizzo 
Hey, what's Drew, up, bro? What's up? what's up, man? Great to be on the show. Thanks for having me. Big yeah, fan. for sure, man. For sure. Thank, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on, and and I'm excited. I'm excited you're here, man. We have we have lots to talk about. Oh yeah, thank you. And uh, and yeah, and, and call off your dogs, bro. All your all your all your. <laughs> <laughs> That's our good friend Jay Patton. That's my buddy. Oh, was that is that who that was? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking guy, man. Figures, you know. It was Jason. Jason. Fucking guy. Let me tell you, well, he's Jason, like a, he knows all the best spots to eat in Jersey, though. If it's late night after a show, you go out with Jay. He knows all the, the greasy spoon diners that are off the hook all over the place. So so did you grow up in Carlstadt? Yeah. Born and raised and, and, here. And, uh, but now I'm up in Sussex County. I kind of bounce back and forth from Sussex County. I got a place in, in, uh, you know, in Bergen County here. But growing up in, in Carlstadt, Carlstadt is literally right next to Lodi, correct? Yep, right next to Lodi. Yep. Which is Misfits country. Oh, yeah. Big Misfits fan. <laughs> Born and raised on the Misfits, you know? I guess if you're living in that, if I guess if you're living, you know, in that part of Jersey. Exactly. The legend, legend, legend runs deep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let, let's talk a little bit. To tell us, tell everybody um, what. What was happening? What were you up to when sort of the shit hit the fan here, like it, like with your music and stuff? Uh, yeah, so I basically, you know, I grew up here and um, always went to shows, you know, started playing guitar when I was young. I was probably like eight years old. I had an older brother that was into all types of stuff going on in the 80s. You know, it was like 1986 when I first started playing guitar. So, um, you know, all the thrash metal. And then from there, got into all the hardcore punk bands, you know, from the area. Obviously, the Misfits, Agnostic Front. And um, and then just started playing gigs, probably with one of my first bands called Crankcase. I think in like 1993. Right, hold on, you get you're getting ahead of yourself. Okay, you're getting ahead of yourself. What was going on? What were you were, musically? What were you doing when the, when the pandemic hit? Were you about to go on oh. tour? Were you on tour? Like, how okay, did that yeah. affect what was going yeah. on in your world? Yeah, it was crazy. We were uh, Soulfly. We were on a full U.S. tour, and uh, you know the Corona thing hit. And we were scheduled to play actually one of the last festivals going on in the world, which was the uh, Heaven and Hell Fest in Mexico City. It was like 75,000 people. So we flew in and did the show. Wow. Uh, we thought we didn't know if it was going to get canceled, canceled or what, but apparently it was one of the, uh, the, the last festivals going on that was wow. not. And so we went down there. We headlined uh, that fest. And it was and where, where was that again? Mexico City. Mexico City. Yep. Right. And then... Um, and then, you know, we were scheduled to be in Europe this entire uh, summer, you know, and, and everything got canceled, man. You know, so that was the last show I played. That was back in March in Mexico City. And um, I had to cancel. I had like a little short solo tour going on around the States. I had to cancel. We were supposed to be in Europe uh, with Soulfly. That got canceled. So I, mean, I don't think we're going to do anything to maybe, who knows, maybe next year, man. It's crazy, you know. And, and of course, you know, something like these summer festival tours, and I've said this to a couple other guys on the show, that's like really your bread and butter, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, dude, this is the first time that I've been home in Jersey uh, in the summertime and probably since, I don't know, 2000, maybe. I mean, I've been going to Europe for the summer festivals between El Nino and, and Soulfly and Cavalier Conspiracy for the, almost the last 20 years, man. So it's, wow. it's so crazy to be home, you know, for the, the summer. Are you keeping busy? Yeah, you know, just doing a lot of, uh, you know, my online jam, my videos. Uh, I right. got Patreon now, so I've been doing a lot of videos on there and my YouTube channel. And then I've been available now to uh, do guitar lessons with, with fans. We'll talk about that a little bit uh, a little bit later because you, you're doing these gu gu guitar lessons now. And, you, and you've also started a Patreon page for yourself, correct? Yep, that's right. So tell me, tell me. How did you get into music uh, initially? Did you grow up in a, was there music in your household? Like what, what, how did music get into your orbit? Uh, yeah. So basically it was like 1986. So I was like eight years old and everybody, you know, in my neighborhood played guitar. My older brother, you know, was starting to play guitar. He was a metal head and, and into punk and hardcore as everybody was basically in my neighborhood. And <laughs> in um, a neighborhood full of guitar players. Yeah, there was a lot of guitar players and a lot of mullets, you know. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of mullets around. <laughs> wow. And uh, a lot of DRI SOD shirts, you know. Yeah. So um, so it was that area, you know, and and uh, I just picked up on it. And I had a lot of great teachers that lived in this area. Um, and I just I stuck with it, man. I've been obsessed with the guitar since I was a kid. And um, shortly after picking it up, you know, started probably one of my first bands and, and 
started gigging, you know, around the area. Let's let's. I mean, I'll, we're gonna we're gonna get into that. I, I'd like to talk a little bit about your who were your guitar influences early on. Who who really who really spoke to you? Uh, I, I see the Hendrix stuff behind you, you know, um, and and you know, like I said, I'm a big Hendrix fan. Um, tell me, you know, who really who really spoke to you as a guitar player? Uh, in the beginning, probably Zeppelin, you know, Jimmy Page, man, and and all the '70s rock classic rock players, man. That's that was my first. Uh, introduction to guitar playing and then from there um you know i got into thrash metal obviously slayer and, and metallica and megadeth and then from there got into all the you know the hardcore crossover bands you know like, like i think agnostic front had just put out uh, liberty and justice that's one of my yeah. favorite records from them and the crumb suckers you know and probably uh, a lot of the more crossover intricate guitar style bands leeway yeah. you know stuff like that so sure uh, I've always just been a huge fan of guitar playing, man. If it's got great guitar playing in it, man, I love it. I don't care if it's jazz, classical, flamenco. I just, I love to hear the guitar in, in any style of music. That's awesome. You're, you're just a, you're just a lover of the instrument, you know? And, and, uh, you know, we, we sort of in this, in this hardcore world, um, a lot of people kind of come like the way I, I kind of look at uh, it, hardcore it, or I've come, I've come to look at it in a certain way is hardcore is like a gateway drug. You know, it's like a lot of people come through the portal of hardcore on the way to, you know, other things. It's sort of, you know, as, as a young person, hardcore kind of says part of the hardcore ethos is, hey, man, it's OK to be in a band. You don't have to be, you know, really technically proficient. You know, just get out there and do it type of thing, you know. So yeah. that, that inspired a lot of people, including myself as a teenager, to, to you know, to, to get into a band and, and start doing it. And a lot of people come through the portal known as hardcore, whether it's whether it's, you know, let's say Moby or Duff from Guns N' Roses or, you know, on and on and on. People that, you know, uh, or you, you, a guy, you know, guys from Rage Against the Machine or, or, or whatever, what have you. So a lot of people come through, you know, come through this this station on the on the way to other things. Do you the first band um, that you were in Crankcase? Uh, do you consider that was that a, a a hardcore band? I mean, we were like a crossover metalcore band. You know, we we definitely had a, a hardcore influence. We did a lot of uh, fast punk hardcore style stuff, thrash metal. We had a lot of breakdowns, you know, but also we had a lot of solos, man. You know, so it it was a definitely a crossover. You know, be like like a crumb suckers style uh, of sound, you know. And and you you told me um, you used to play what were some of the venues some of those infamous uh, jersey venues that you guys used to play uh first and foremost pipeline you know the pipeline in, in newark in newark that was uh, <laughs> one of my favorite clubs to play shows used to get wild there man and then right around the corner you had studio one so which was a little bit more geared towards metal um but man i can't i can't tell people yeah how, how how wild those shows were at studio one and pipeline in the early 90s man i mean shit was just out of control at those shows yeah, I've said it before, man. I remember some. I remember uh, being at Studio One for like Biohazard shows, and you know, sh oh God, there were there was those shows like every yeah. show was like a riot, you know. <laughs> those shows got wild, man. Yeah, that place that place was one of my favorite clubs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so walk us through a little bit. Um, so Crankcase, what, Crankcase sort of ran its course? Like, how did Crankcase sort of pan out, and how did El Nino get going? Uh, well, basically, I, I met the guys in Crankcase when I was in high school. I was probably like 16 years old, and right. me and my drummer went to uh, Teterboro Vocational uh, School in Teterboro, New Jersey, and he was a metalhead. I, you know, I was a metal metalhead in the you know, punk hardcore and everything. Mm -hmm. We loved Overkill, you know, stuff like that, and uh, we wanted to mix it, you know, with more of a punk hardcore type sound and um we just started gigging around the area man and we used to do it total diy style man he used to work for a uh, an amusement park so he could always get his hands on uh generators right so we an, were an amusement park in jersey yeah it was like a traveling like carnival type right, right. Amusement park, you know for kids so <laughs> okay. he, he could always get generators man and we were known for going down to the meadows, like down by like Giant Stadium down there, there's old dirt bike trails through the meadows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Generator keg parties down there. That's the awesome. Kids. So we would go down there, and there'd be like literally hundreds of, of kids down there. You know, we wow. would the word, and it'd be like 300 kids out in the middle of the meadows, 
specific, uh, specifically under exit 16W on the turnpike. <laughs> right That's awesome. The ridge, right on, right on the Hackensack river. And if you were there, people know those shows used to get wild, man. We wouldn't go on to like two in the morning and the cops wouldn't even come down to break it up. Cause it was like a riot down. There. So, so this was, this was pretty much before the, this big social media thing. How, how did the word get out there? Just like, sort of like word of mouth type thing. Just, just beer, man. You know, we were like, "Yo, free beer," and 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 everybody, you know, beer talks. Metalhead, hardcore kid would come. Like, we were known for that with crankies, you know, like ah, we okay. Clubs, like we were known for getting that generator on the weekends and just throwing these big bashes down in the Meadowlands, and we'd have like other bands open up for us, um, and we would go on at two in the morning, and it would just be like a, a drunken party, mosh pits in the meadows, get getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. <laughs> Jersey summer, you know, I mean, uh, you know, people from the area, they remember us for that. And it was a lot of fun. That's, that's awesome, man. I mean, I, I can relate. I grew up, uh, I grew up, uh, some of my teenage years uh, were up in, uh, up in the Bronx. And there's a part of the Bronx where I was living, which uh, I guess it's the spite, uh, spite and dival section of the Bronx, or, or you can even, even call it even part of Riverdale down by the Hudson River that was that's just, you know, yeah. They would set up like there was a generator that you, yep. they they would they bring the generator down there and we'd yep. have you know people would have these sort of keg parties and you know they were they were incredible they were a lot, yep. a lot of fun into the wee hours you know yeah that's what it was man <laughs> yeah so cool um, and then so okay so crankcase sort of plays out and how does El Nino get going um, so this was probably crankcase you know we started then doing a lot of clubs opening up for bands. In between the meadow party shows, you know, we, we'd also play we played the whole Jersey, New York City circuit, Pipeline, right. Stone Pony, you know, uh, old obsessions. Uh, oh, Studio yeah, wow. Pony. Pulling uh, cards, obsessions. Yep. Ooh. Like Coney Island High years ago. I mean, we, yeah, we did a yeah. lot. We did the whole circuit. Sure. And then um, it just kind of, you know, the guys all got, you know, busy. A couple guys, I think, went to school. Um, and I still was playing. I was working. I was doing uh, working for a, a sign company. And, um, and I knew some of the guys in El Nino and they, you know, they were looking for a guitar player. This is when Jorge was singing from Marauder. Yep. And, um, I came down to audition. I was like a 20 year old kid, um, got the gig. And then, uh, we started playing, you know, all around New York city, doing a lot of New York hardcore shows. You know, I remember playing, uh, Coney Island high. I remember the old bank. Remember that place? Sure. Um, Still there. all over, all over the city, all over Jersey. Um, and then, you know, the, the sound kind of changed. Jorge went back to Marauder. I mean, I, I love Marauder, one of my, one of my favorite bands of all time. Yeah, I used and, to manage them. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used and, to uh, manage them in, in the master in the master killer days, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. My favorite era. So, um, and then El Nino, you know, it was crazy, man. You know, we, we kind of, it kind of went into a different direction, you know? Um, and literally six months after uh, recording our first demo at our good friend Las Penis Studio in Hoboken, Yep. Um, we got a deal with Mike Gitter. You know, Mike Gitter was at Roadrunner and he gave us a record deal. And it was, dude, it was like overnight, man. We hit the road. And, and ironically enough, my first tour ever was March 2001. We went out on tour uh, opening up for Soulfly. Woo! Which was crazy. Full that was, that was your that was your first tour? That was my first tour. Yeah. Now, there's a, there's, our, our, there's a big, there's a big, uh, there's a big uh, is it Latino connection going on here, right? Yeah, every, I mean, everybody in, in the band was, you know, of, of Hispanic descent. I'm Italian. And then everybody in Soulfly as well. Uh, nah, we're all mixed, you know. I'm Italian-Irish. Matt Max is actually, you know, he's, he's Italian-Brazilian. Oh, uh, I, th I thought he was, I thought they were straight Brazilian. No, nah, just Max. Okay. From Brazil. So, um, so you do, so you're on the first, the first tour that you did uh, with El Nino was out with Soulfly. It was yeah. that, be was that before George left? That was right when George went back to Marauder, and, and then and then Christian, who was playing bass, yep. stepped in and was singing for El Nino. Yep. He started singing, and it got a little more melodic, you know, right. kind of more in tune with the, the whole new metal thing that was going on at that time. Right. Um, and then, yeah, man, it, it was crazy. We we got a deal with Roadrunner Records. You know, we we were just playing around New York, New Jersey on the weekends. I was working for like a construction company, and. Uh, you know, playing shows till two, three in the morning, getting home, then going to work at six in the morning, you know, and uh, we got a deal and, and we hit, we, uh, hit that's exciting. Studio. Yeah. It was, I mean, for me, it was like a dream come true. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. We went into the studio to make our first record with Ron St. Germain, you know, who did uh, those old bad brains records. So that, it was like 
dream come true oh. to work with him and such a good dude and amazing to work with. And uh, and then we hit the road, man. 2001, we hit the road with Soulfly. That was my first tour, and and I've been on the road ever since, nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was my, Mike Gitter signed you to to road. Mike Gitter signed you to Roadrunner. Yeah, he was A and R over at Roadrunner, and he was a huge uh, huge help um, with getting the band going. As was also Billy Milano, man. Billy Milano was was a huge help with us, uh, you know, in the beginning with getting us out there. Cool. And then um, the 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 El Nino thing sort of at a certain point, uh, you moved on. Yeah, two thousand and two, I quit. I uh, went off to just do other projects, and that's really when I started doing a lot more, getting more into like flamenco guitar, classical, and mm-hmm. putting out my instrumental records, which is kind of you know like instrumental guitar music mixed with flamenco and mm-hmm. new wave flamenco classical stuff, jazz. Um, and then literally the day after I quit El Nino, man, I, I got the phone call from, from Mike Gitter saying, Hey man, it sucks. You, you quit El Nino. We're all bummed about it, but uh, would you be interested in joining Soulfly? And I was like, what the, f-? you know, like, holy shit, man. It was, yeah. And I, I was love working. this. Yeah, go ahead. I, I love this. I love this story, man. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy. Cause you know, especially since I was the biggest Sepultura fan and, and Soulfly fan. And, and, and with Soulfly, you know, we, I mean, with El Nino, we were all huge fans. You know, we were very influenced by Sepultura and Soulfly and that whole South American um, heavy music vibe. So um, it was just crazy, man. It was, you know, again, I went from working for a construction company in Jersey to next thing you know, I'm playing with one of my, my idols and touring the world, you know, nonstop playing these huge festivals. It's, That's- it's just really... There is there is some justice in this world. That, 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 that's, that's incredible. And, and literally, you left El Nino, and the next day you got the call? I got the call, and um, Gitter called me. You know, my good friend Mike Gitter, you're a good friend. He's a, yeah, such yeah. a great dude. He's done so much for everybody in the music sure. scene. Um, so he said, yeah, expect a call from, you know, Max's wife, Gloria, who's the uh, manager. And um, I didn't hear from her, you know, and I was working for a buddy of mine in Jersey doing electrical. Um, in a hot summer, you know, going up in crawl spaces, 115 right. degrees, 100 percent humidity, just, just <laughs> miserable. And right. she never called. And I figured out, oh, I guess they, they got somebody else. And then lo and behold, man, it was like a Friday. I remember it was like 150, 15 degrees, 100 percent humidity in Jersey. I'm just like drenched in sweat. And I'm like, mm-hmm. man, I can't do this anymore. And then I got the phone call. And she's like, can you fly out Monday morning? And I was like, yes, get me out there. And I flew out to Arizona. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And what you flew out there, showed up, rehearsed a couple days, and then played the first show. Yeah, we what they had planned was uh, I went out there, had to learn like thirty songs that weekend. So I just, would just well, a lot of them I knew, like the old Sepultura songs. Sure, we always played that stuff when I, my old band Crankcase. So I knew a lot of the old Sepultura songs. Right, and um, showed up, you know, out in Arizona. We did a couple days of rehearsal, and then we did three shows out on the West Coast. Did the whiskey, uh, some other shows that were like sold out, packed. And Mm -hmm. then we went right into the studio and started recording uh, the Prophecy record. And that was in 2003. And then I went home to Jersey for a couple months, was working on a couple of my other projects at home. And um, I got to call, like, we're we're going on tour. And my first tour ever um, with Soulfly was in Europe. We did, like, three or four shows in Europe. And then we went down to South Africa. And we played, we did, like, we did, like, three or four shows down in South Africa, which was... uh, Wow, that was a trip. What a what a fantastic story. That that's that's really great, man. And and it 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 uh, really makes you feel good uh, to know that like a hardworking guy who just has such a passion for playing music like yourself. You know, there's so there's so many guys like us with such a passion for music that so that that that, that don't reach the promised land. You know, yeah. and uh, that that lucky. that's yeah. Very lucky. Very lucky. Yeah, you know, I have. Um, you know, I have a bit of a history with uh, with the Sepultura camp. Um, you know, back in the day, I um, where was that? Hold on a second. I got some, I got something here somewhere. Let me find that. I thought I pulled it. I guess not. Mm-hmm. Um, I did the third the third world chaos um, oh, yeah. VHS. You know, yeah. for those for those guys. Back right. in the day. Yeah. So I worked with, you know, when, when Igor was still in the band and, you know, Glory was managing them. So I produced that uh, ba- back in the day um, before you joined. Hey, um, hang with me a second. Let me shout out my sponsors and, and we'll get back to it. 
Uh, it's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sponsored by Fryette Amplification, New York Hardcore Comics, and the Organic Grill. I want to thank everybody from around the world that's watching. Our guest today is Mark Rizzo. I still have that VHS tape. I know I pulled the fucking shot. I don't know what, what happened to it. That sucks. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened to it. Strange things happen here in Florida, you know? I fucking go through researching the shit, and then it fucking disappears. Anyway, here we go. Um, I want to announce another show that's coming up. Uh, on Friday, June 26th, we're doing the old school Boston hardcore show number two with Christina Lise McCarthy from Beverly Hills 90210 and Child's Play 2. She's going to be on the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. You might be saying, like, what the fuck? I will tell you this. Christina Lise McCarthy was in the trenches back in the day, in the early days of Boston Hardcore. I know because I was there in 1981. She was there um, at all the early SSD Control stuff. Uh, she dated Springer, who sang for SSD Control, and she has uh, incredible perspective on, uh, on those days. And we're going to talk about the early Boston Hardcore days and, and her career out in Hollywood, at Beverly Hills 90210. She was on China Beach and and child's play too. So this should be interesting, you know, trying to trying to mix it up a little bit here, you know? So keep an eye out for that. Also, uh, my birthday's coming up June 28th, and just so happens it's a Sunday, and we're gonna be doing a show that day. And I think what I wanna do for my birthday show is we're gonna do the people's show, where I think I'm gonna put the link up in the in the chat room. And whoever wants to come on the show, you come on the show and be my guest on my birthday. I want to know what's going on with you and house things. And that's what we're going to do. So that's my birthday show on June 28th. Also, uh, Christine Cambria's artwork behind me, www.cambria.com. Check her out. Check out her incredible artwork. Let me find that stuff. Where is that? Uh... Hang with me, hang with me. Bingo. Christine Cambria, www.cambria.com. Check out her artwork. It's incredible. Um, what else? The throwback shirts I mentioned. Everything else. Oh, PayPal and Patreon. Support the show. Uh, if you can't handle the, the Patreon thing, if you can't handle Patreon, there is a PayPal link as well. There is a PayPal link for the show. And let me shout out some, let me shout out some PayPal people while we're at it here. Let me shout out some of my PayPal people. Brian Whittemore, Eric Ackerbloom, Edgar Reyes, Lenny and Michelle B from Crazy Eddie, Gina B, thank you. Mark Tolch, Michael Kovalaski, Stefan Hogan, Chad Lacey, Jason Leroff from, from Warzone, Matt Gray, who drums an antidote. Domna Colella, what's up, Dom? RS70 Entertainment, who, by the way, created this New York hardcore symbol that I fly every now and then. Scott Demon, Nick Mondello, John Lombardi, Stephen Hogan, and Emily Morgan. I mentioned Stephen Hogan twice, and Emily Morgan. Those are some of my PayPal people. Yo, take your hat off, throw it in the ring, and support this show. Let's keep this show going. I'm coming back to New York on Monday. We are doing a informal, an informal gathering down in Tompkins Square Park on June 20th, Saturday, June 20th, an informal gathering. Uh, I'll be down there. We'll have the A7 shirts for sale. If you got a couple bucks in your pocket, if not, we'd love to see you. We're just, we're going to be figuring that out and, an annou and announcing that um, pretty much pretty soon. Uh, what's this? Why can't we donate on Super Chat? Uh, I don't know what Super Chat is, bro, but you can donate on PayPal or Patreon. Sign up, yo, Patreon, yo, you throw your hat in the ring for two bucks, five bucks. Um, I'm, un I'm releasing all kinds of, of never before seen stuff. I asked Christina Lisa McCarthy to be on Brooklyn Bass Furnace podcast. She said no. Well, bro, what can I tell you? I'm sorry she didn't come on your podcast. Um, 
Drew got a no show. What is? I'm not sure what that means. Saturday the 20th. Yes. Cool as fuck. Yes. Better late than never. Not sure what that means. But uh, you're looking good, Drew. Are you coming on to me? <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Uh, so there you go. Keep keep it keeping it moving. There's the Patreon. Uh, there's the the uh, the PayPal. Um, I see a couple people are jumping in. I appreciate it. Let's keep it moving. I think I'm covering everything here. Let me get rid of these banners. Okay. Uh, we're gonna take some. Yeah, no, I, I don't get super chat technology yet. I have to look into it. Thanks for giving me the heads up. I will. I will. I will. I'll. I will check that up. Return to burn. Yes, absolutely. What is Kevin Crowley up to these days? You know, bro, what does this look like? A old school New York hardcore chat room, bro? Come on. Um, here we go. I want to read a little something. I want to read a little something about our today's guest. Let me get all this. I want to read this about today's guest before we bring him back on. Uh, get some questions together. I know there was a couple of questions. I have to scroll through and find them. Uh, so it's almost question time. So everybody, everybody uh, get ready with some questions, all right? I want to read this little thing before we bring him back on the show. This is a quote from Max Cavalera, uh, formerly of Sepultura, now of Soulfly and the Cavalera Conspiracy. I'm not going to do this in my best Max accent. I might, I might accent a word or two, but uh, this is a quote from Max Cavalera. Mark doesn't care about that stuff, which I think is one of the qualities he has. He doesn't give a shit. He loves what he does. He loves playing in Soulfly. He loves working with me. We are totally connected. He gives 150% every show, no matter if there's 10 people or 10,000, which is rare. Sometimes when there's not a lot of people, it's hard to go out there and still be excited, and he does it. I do believe he's underrated big time, but I'm kind of happy about that because if he gets too big, then he will go away. He will join a big band. I'll be out looking for another guitar player, and it would suck. It would really suck to lose Mark. I'm kind of happy. It's almost like a secret thing we have, this treasure we have. He's fantastic. He's an amazing guitar player. I sit sometimes around the dressing room just to hear him play, just go in the dressing room to hang out while he's practicing, and to hear him playing some of the flamenco sections in the dressing room or when he's just shredding. He's Keeler. That's, that's a little bit of a Max accent. He's Keeler. He is a true, true guitar hero. Let's bring him back. Mark Rizzo. <laughs> there you go. Well, it seems like your boss really loves your guitar playing, bro. That's pretty cool. He should, he should tell my mother that because she, she, <laughs> she, doesn't, she doesn't believe I, you know, I practice hard enough, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so Soulfly now, uh, eight albums, world, constant world tours, and wow, it, it's just been, it's just, you know, been, been a constant ride, huh? It's been a roller coaster, man. I mean, these last 17 years I've been in the band now, it's incredible. It's, That's you know, it's, incredible. It's, it's flown by, man. Like, you know, uh, I joined the band when I was like 25, you know, I'm 42 now. I don't know where the hell these years went. It's insane. It's insane. Well, I think, I, I think a testament to it is obviously you just, you, 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 you have a, such a passion for the music and you have an incredible work ethic, you know, and, and that goes a long way, man. You know, thank you. It, it really does. Hey, look, who's checking in our old friend uh, from El Nino, Laz Pina. You know, what's up, Laz? How's it going, you know, man? We can hang soon. Hi, Laz. You know, I go way back with Laz. You know, yeah. from back when you know when he was in Broomhelda and, and we were doing the antidote thing, and you yeah. know, uh, Laz and his brother Rick and and and, and Roland. So yeah. you know, and, and, great. Yep. What? Um, here you go. Here's a couple. Of, we're gonna throw a couple of questions around. Did you teach yourself to play? Did you do? Uh, did you do lessons or anything? Uh, I took a lot of lessons with a, with a lot of dudes in my area. One of my one of my biggest lessons uh, guitar teachers was a dude named Dennis Kimak, who is uh, around these parts in the cover band scene is is uh, a rock star, man. I always joke around. Me and him, like we walk into into bars around here, and everyone, uh, you know, they 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 scream his name out, and they're like, "Who's you know who's this idiot you're with?" They'll, they'll point to me, you know. <laughs> he played in all the cover bands around here, so he's like really he's one of the big shredders from Jersey, you know. 
Um, but I learned a lot from him. He went up to, to Berkeley, up in Boston, studied there for a couple of years. And uh, he, he was one of my biggest guitar teachers, him and, and a couple other guys in there. So, yeah, I studied with people and I still take lessons, man, from people. If I, if I see someone that, you know, I think is awesome that I want to learn from, you know, I'll be like, hey, man, can I get a lesson? And so I'm, I'm constantly trying to still take lessons with people I appreciate and, and also teach myself, you know, just. Absolutely. Do you do you have a um, a routine, a warm up, a, a, a big warm up routine or uh, uh, to before shows? Um, I'm just jamming, man. You know, I'm usually just can always find me in the dressing room just playing guitar. I do a lot of uh, just practice into like my back and tracks, um, which is in my solo gigs where I go out and just play to an iPod or I, I play with a band and play all my instrumental stuff. I just I basically just run through that and and get ready for the show and play, you know, run through my leads and my parts and try to work on some new stuff if I, if I can. Here's a question from Manel DePore. Favorite flamenco guitarist? Uh, I always like guys like Paco Pena and Paco de Lucia, you know, Paco de Lucia was definitely one of my favorites. Um, and I like Paco Pena. He was a little bit more traditional, um, less fusion-y, jazzy, you know, I got a big respect for all those guys, you know. I saw Paco uh, de Lucia play uh, with John McLaughlin and oh. Al Demiola. Yeah, sick. Yeah, right. the three of them. Uh, yeah, I saw that at the Beacon Theater. In wow. the, I think that. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. That. That'd be. Yeah. They did it. They did it in the early '80s, and then I think they did a reunion in like the late '80s. I, I saw it in the early '80s. I saw it the first time around. Sick. You know, be, being sort of like Al Demiola was on my radar screen back then, and, yeah. and we were. It was just. It was like. Yeah, it was my it was mind boggling. It was, you know, another another time where it was like is the yeah. first time I saw Joe Satriani play oh. at uh, I saw him play at the bottom line in New York and wow. my mind was blown. Blew my mind. I think there's footage of that on YouTube. I, I pulled that up. It was like 88 he played the bottom lounge, I think. And we and and you know, listen, as we all know, when you're really close in a situation like that, it, it's a whole nother world. You know, you oh. go see concerts and whatever. But you know, when 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 you're a lover of guitar playing, which we both are, uh, when you're close and you can really see what's happening, you know, mm -hmm. I was really close at seeing Satriani play for that that the first time. It was it was uh, it was really mind blowing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was surfing with the alien days. Yeah, yeah, that's my you know? favorite. Um, here here's a here's um here's a here's a question here. Do you like playing the Bloody Roots era stuff? Uh, we did that record, the Roots uh, tour all over South America, Russia. We went now, to I think, let, let, let me, is that this right here? Yep, that was from that tour. That was uh, yep. from like two years ago. We, we did that all over, basically a worldwide tour. We played the Sepultura Roots record. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it's not my favorite record from Sepultura. I like the old thrash stuff, um, like Beneath the Remains and Arise, Schizophrenia. Right. Uh, CD. But Roots was fun, man. It was cool. You know, there's not there's not a lot of guitar solos. So for, sometimes, you know, I, I, I like I like playing leads a lot, you know, so but um, it was fun, man. The fans loved that tour and, and it was an incredible experience to go all over the place playing that record. I mean, Roots was uh, Roots was the last record that the Cavalera brothers did together before they split. That's right. And, right. And, and yep. I mean, it's, it's the way I remember it. The really big breakthrough record, in, in a certain regard, was the record before that. Uh, was that Chaos AD, right? Chaos AD, yeah. I think that was uh, the first one that was on Warner Brothers, and yeah, that's, that's one of my favorite records from them, man. You know that that record actually had a huge, I think, a New York hardcore vibe, man. You know, they yeah, just got off the road with Sick of It All for sure. Uh, in '91, I think it was they did uh, sure. the Titans on the Block tour, and I know that that was a big influence on them, man. A lot of breakdowns on that record, man. You know. I mean, go here's here's another one. I'm not sure if it's from that tour, but man, you guys go out and play some big shows, huh? Yeah, it's crazy, man. This this time of the year, I'm usually in Europe for three, four months, man. Just just playing all the the, the European festivals, man. It's just you know day after day playing in front of seventy thousand, fifty thousand people, you know, every single day. It's uh, it's insane. That's <laughs> that's awesome, man. I'm 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 so happy for you, bro. You know. Um, Thank you. what, here's, here's a question from Oleg. Hi, Mark. What happened with the Cortez project? Thanks for every Russian gig you did. Appreciate, appreciate the claustrophobia shirt. Oh yeah. 
My buddies yeah. from Brazil, claustrophobia. These guys are ah, awesome. Okay. Yeah, thrash band from Brazil. They're awesome, man. They actually All live right. in Vegas now. So, um, what was the question again? Uh, Cortez. The, uh, the Cor Cortez was, uh, project. Yeah, basically when I when I left El Nino, um, I was doing my my first instrumental record solo instrumental record. And then I was doing this project Cortez, which was kind of, um, it was heavy. It was kind of in tune with like um, uh, what we were doing with El Nino, but maybe a little bit more technical on guitar, starting to incorporate solos. Uh, definitely very influenced by like leeway, you know, stuff like that with you know, uh -huh. melodic vocals, but, but heavy. Um, yeah. I mean, basically it just kind of, you know, maybe one day we'll do a reunion, but I, I basically got the soul fly gig, got real busy and then uh, the singer Roger, he kind of continued in, in his direction doing the Cortez. Um, so, you know, we'll see, man. Maybe we'll do a reunion one day. It was great stuff. Hey, um, tell me about the guitar that I saw you playing there before. Can you pull that out and, and talk about it a little bit? Yeah, this is uh, this is my signature uh, Washburn seven string. Hell yeah. And it's basically, um, can you see me? Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, it's basically like a Les Paul. You know, I grew up. Loving Les Pauls, and um, I always loved playing. I, I got a Les Paul that I love playing, black one like this. And I basically told Washburn, just make it similar to a Les Paul and um, just make it a seven string because I, I play more seven strings nowadays with Soul Flies, especially. Right. Um, but yeah, it's a great guitar, man. You know, you can you can hit me up online and I can hook you up with one or uh, you can go through Washburn and get it online. Um, yeah, you know, through my Patreon page, we have a deal with guitar lessons and also purchasing the guitar. So it's a great guitar, man. It's a meat and potato. Great guitar for metal, for hardcore, EMG pickups. Nice. You know, switch, fixed bridge. It's just a meat and potato guitar, man. You know, it's uh, it's perfect for, for jumping around and shredding and whatever you want to do on it, man. You know, all types of music. So That's your, that's your, that's your workhorse, huh? Yeah. And chicks dig it, too. It looks good. On <laughs> that's that's it. it. <laughs> good good hey tell us about uh you're doing lessons uh tell, explain the lessons patreon thing a little bit yeah so i uh you know when this whole pandemic hit um one of my good buddies um that books me basically was like look man you know we're gonna have to can't you know you're not gonna be able to do any shows for a while so why don't you open up a start a patreon page i never really had had heard of it before um so we started it up and it seems to, to be working and fans are digging it so it's basically i, I do all my my live at home playthroughs, you know, you can make a request. Uh, I put guitar lesson, little clips up there. And if you want to do uh, one on one guitar lessons, um, you know, at home video like Skype or WhatsApp, I use um, you can do it through Patreon. You can just sign up and there's all different tiers that you can pay for. And I got a couple a couple of dudes uh, that I that I give lessons to. And it's a lot of fun, man. It's a great way to, uh, you know, to interact with fans and teach you know i'm home anyway so i might as well yeah. uh stay busy playing guitar absolutely and and it's just uh, I, you know you're pre you're preaching to the to the choir right i mean uh this patreon has really connected me to my people worldwide i, I have over 100 people and i'm releasing it's just such a great way to to communicate and and, and a little bit for me too is like i'm a little bit tired of, of putting of putting stuff um on the internet for free. Exactly. I mean, at first it was kind of cool, and I mm -hmm. and it, but now every time I, I I put something up, I see it reposted on a bunch of different sites with no credit or nothing, and I'm over yeah. it, man. I'm yeah, I'm man. fucking sick of it, you know. That's what my buddy was saying, you know, because I'm I'm basically when I'm home, man, I'm playing guitar all day, practicing anyway. Right. And I go live on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and my buddy was like, "Dude, you're giving it away for free, man." Yeah. So Start a Patreon page and and do what you're doing on there. So. Right. I took his, took his advice. A question, a question from one of our boys. Are you still endorsed by PV and Yamaha? Um, yeah, I still use uh, PV amps. I love that mm -hmm. 6505. Um, I use that often, but I also use uh, the positive grid uh, amps also, which are cool because they're real tiny and um, I can put them, I could put them uh, like in a book bag, man, and just jump on a plane and go do a show somewhere in the world. Um, so I'm kind of, you know, I've been using both, man. But I always grew up playing PV. PV's great. You know, uh, P PV's PV's interesting. It's um, you know how PV came on my radar screen. You know who used to play all the PV gear back in the day? Leonard Skinner. Yeah, they were like a country. A lot of country. Yeah. Rock bands used to play PV. Th that was like their whole thing. PV powered Leonard Skinner. You know, and like 
right? <laughs> we used to love Leonard Skinner back in the day, you know? So, um, you know, no, uh, PV's not out of business, right? Uh, no, uh, no, 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 not, not far, far, far from it. Um, so was it uh, just bounce? Listen, uh, our guest, our guest today is Mark Rizzo, Soulfly Cavalera Conspiracy, uh, formerly of El Nino. Uh, you got any questions, please post them. Uh, it's that part of the show. So uh, any kind of questions and uh, let's hear from you. How do you do? Let's hear from you. Um, you know, I was thinking, uh, didn't, you, didn't you start a little, a little record label at some point? Uh, I had something called Flamenco Records, and it basically just – it was a way to put out my, my instrumental records okay. in the beginning because, you know, not, not too many labels are interested in putting out instrumental stuff. Yeah, but sure. I'm sort of a fan of, like, Joe Satriani, Al Di Miola. Yeah, and, man. And, and that stuff like that. So I basically just started it myself, and I put out um, my first instrumental record, and then I was putting out, um, uh, like, compilation CDs of all my favorite bands from, from the area here back home in Jersey. That's and awesome. You, and um, and I would take those and put them on the merch table for free, um, you know, on Soulfly tours. Um, so I put I put out a couple of those. That was a lot of fun. Um, and then I wound up signing with Shrapnel Records, which was for me. That's you know, like was, a, that's that's Shrapnel's like the shredding label, bro. Yeah, Mike Varney. Oh, you know, he's a, he's a yeah. legend. Network. Yeah. He's the guy that discovered in Vey Malmsteen. That's you know? right. That's right. So um, so he somehow. Um, uh, one of my, my good friends, Ian Friedman, who passed away, he was a lawyer out in L.A., good dude, originally from Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, rest in peace. He um, he linked me up with Varney, got me a deal right around the time that I put out my first instrumental record on my own. And I was like, holy, I was like, shit, man, you know, that was huge for me because I was I grew up listening to all that shrapnel record stuff, you know, Vinnie Moore, Jason Becker. The cacophony records, you know. Yeah, I remember yeah, Racer X. I remember all that shit. Yeah, yeah man. All, listen, you and me yeah. both, man. You know. Yeah. And and that actually, that kind of got me back into doing more shred solo stuff, you know, because because Varney had heard my record, Mike Varney, and he said uh, it's, it was more acoustic, you know, like new wave yeah. flamenco, jazzy mm -hmm. stuff. And he's like, man, I want you to do some more metal stuff. And I was like, all right, Ooh. dude. So I was just let it rip, man, you know. And and that was the beginning of of making my instrumental records. Cool. Um, and you and you started the, the label with your brother, apparently. Yeah, we were doing it together. You know. Okay. Was, you know, we... Let's see, Kenny uh, Kenny Ballone checking in. Mark Lodi in the house. Mod, Mod. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, dude? Love Mod. Yeah. That's yeah. Another Jersey, you know, obviously classic band. That sort of leaves us uh, leads us into this question from Dylan Cooper. Favorite New Jersey hardcore bands? Are there any any bands from maybe back in the day that you feel sort of maybe didn't get their just you know just desserts? Anybody that that really resonates? Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, off the top of my head, um, I love this band Faction Zero, man. I grew up going to see those guys play at like the old Connections at Pipeline, and I always loved them because they were such an awesome uh, crossover, you know, style hardcore band. You know, the guitar playing had great riffs, rhythms. It was kind of biohazardish, you know. So that, that's definitely has always been one of my bands that I always uh, I always tell people, man, check out. You know, even when I first joined Soulfly, I remember telling Max about Faction Zero and how much I loved them. You know, they still rehearse, I think, over at uh, in Rutherford at the old BB Jamming Studios. So I they they I was, played they played one of the last one of the last uh, A Seven shows that we did. They 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 they're still around. They're they're playing, and a yeah. friend of mine, Rob, is playing drums. Yeah, there's there's a friend. Yeah, they're they're they're. they're, they're, they're yeah. yeah, they they just opened up for Soulfly on our last. Yeah, that's show. right. That's right. I saw it right. Yeah, yeah. Right. so it was it was awesome, you know. But there's so many, man. Dude, there were so many bands that I used to love back in the day. Uh, New Jersey Bloodline, oh, E Town yeah. Concrete, obviously. Oh well, uh, yeah, they they were you know they're still huge here in Jersey. Uh, dude, Jer Jersey had such a great scene, you know. So used, many great bands. I used to manage Fury of Five back in the day, you know. <laughs> Those were infamous. We opened up Woo. for them. In case we opened up for Fury of Five two or three times down at the Stone Pony, and man, that those shows were wild, boy. Oof. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, I listen. Uh, Fury, Fury of Five, they they ended up they beat the shit out of their booking agent, and I was like, I love these guys. I got to manage them, man. Like this is, yeah. I want. Yeah. I got to get in on this, man. That like any, you know, like it, it, it was. Yeah, it was pretty pure at the time. I thought, you know, yeah. to beat down your infamous scumbag booking agent, you know, 
right? these guys, I think I need to manage these guys, <laughs> you, you know, but, uh, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Thomas uh, Starkey, uh, 89.5 Seton Hall radio played those bands. Of course. I mean, you're a Jersey guy. I used to get it. You know, I got it in Manhattan. Uh, uh, give me a little bit on, on, on the 89.5 Seton Hall pirate radio. I, I, yeah, I can't say enough about that station. Yeah. Uh, they were so supportive for so, all the bands in, in this area. And, and back in those days, you know, you didn't have YouTube, you didn't have, yeah. uh, you know, the internet. So, I mean, I remember that's where I heard of a lot of new bands, you know, was, was on SOU, man. They had the street patrol. Um, it was called where they played all the local stuff. They used to play my old band crankcase. I had a death metal band back in the day called Thanatopsis. They played us El Nino, you know, they were huge, uh, support for El Nino. I think that's half the reason why, uh, why we really got a deal with Roadrunner was because, um, you know, we were, we were getting such a, a push from uh, SOU. And um, I can't say enough good things about that, that radio station. And uh, they used to do those big uh, SOU festivals, you know, uh, down at uh, Convention Hall, I think it was down in down yeah. the shore. And then yeah, yeah. we did a couple, we played a couple of those, you know, SOU shows all the time at the old Birch Hill. Um, yeah you know, with El Nino. So, I mean, that, those were, those years were awesome, man. Great yeah. show. I mean, S S O U and, and, and I was, I was on S O U fairly recently, I think maybe, a, I don't know, a year or two ago. And, and what's, you know, it's college radio. So there's, there's young kids coming through there, you know, and it's always really fresh and vibrant. And, and that's, and I think Jen, Jen Kaiser still, Jen Kaiser still her. works there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if she does, but uh, she, she was very, uh, an important person there that really pushed yeah. uh, Il Nino in the beginning that really put us in regular rotation, you know, her and, and uh, you know, Dave Shivari was, was good friends yep. with her, I think. And, and, uh, no, I actually think she, I think she still in some capacity has a job there. If, okay. if, 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 if I'm remembering correctly, here's a question from our friend, Jason Bennett. Is there a specific part of the world that you look forward to playing the most on a tour cycle? Soul fly plays everywhere. Yeah, we do. We, we really, <laughs> one of the few bands that goes to some of the most, you know, I joke around. It's like, what, what do we do? Just take a dart and throw it at the map, you know? Uh, yeah, my favorite place in the world to be, man. And, dude, I'm going right back there once this quarantine is over, uh, is Colombia, man. I, I love I love all South America, but specifically Colombia is just, uh, I, I could live there, dude. It's one of the most beautiful countries I've ever been to my, in my life for everything wow. that you could think of. The food is absolutely amazing. The people are so hungry for metal and, and shows. The women are the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. And it's like 10 to 1, the ratio of, of chicks to dudes when you walk anywhere on the streets or a restaurant, a bar. It's just incredible. And Brazil. Brazil is like that too, man. So, I, you know, I spend a lot of time going down there. I, got, I have a band that I produce down there called Malesh. And, What's the uh, name? Called Malesh. Malesh. Yeah, like a hard rock. Heavy. They got some heavy stuff. Um but I produce them and they fly me back and forth. And once this quarantine's over, man, I'm going right back to Boca <laughs> Taco, man, to do some shows with those guys and, and uh, some recording and just hang out and have a good time. Fantastic. You, you know, that that's, that's great. And uh, I have a little experience in, in um, Argentina, you know, uh, I went, went, went down there, you know, uh, with biohazard, yeah. you know, and uh, have really, really fond memories of, you know, I went down with biohazard um, to, to Argentina in, in like 93, right? They had a one-off, right? And it was, it was biohazard and bad religion. And, nice. you know, we got off the plane in, in Buenos Aires yep. and this huge cheer went up of people. Yep. And so we were like, 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 who's on the plane with us? It was like that scene in Young Frankenstein, you know, when, yep. when they lock it, he said, hello, handsome. And he's, you know, yep. it was like, we get off the plane and people are like, yay. And we're like, who the mm -hmm. fuck was on the plane with us, you know? Yeah. And all these kids came to the airport and they yep. were, they were, you know, and then followed us to the hotel. Yep. And yep. it was, it was, it was incredible. And they, it was biohazard, bad religion. And they played like a indoor, big indoor arena, like a basketball arena. Exactly. It was, it was, it was really, really something special. And I have really fond memories of that trip, you know? That's a beautiful country, Argentina, man. I love it there. Here's uh, I know a, a friend um, a friend of ours really uh, sponsors this band and they've been at Raw Brigade from Colombia they, they okay. they've been they've they've been up up there um, I played with up, those guys yeah 
let me see what um, what else we got here. Uh, I got to do some driving. Okay, Larry. Well, I love when people check into the show and say, "Sorry, I, I can't. I can't watch the show." <laughs> <laughs> well, you watch. You watch. You watch some of it there. Um, mm -hmm. All right. What else? Uh, hang with me one second. Let, let me deal with the sponsors a bit and. Uh, come on back, and we'll head it down the home stretch, buddy. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sponsored by Fryette Amplification, New York Hardcore Comics, and now, friends and foes alike, the Organic Grill. Organic Grill is a vegan restaurant located in the East Village of New York City at 123 First Avenue, featured in New York Magazine, the New York Times, and Veg News. Their dishes have won numerous awards, including Best Veggie Burger. They make their own cheeses, sausage, and burger patties, and every dish on the menu can be made gluten-free. This year, they are celebrating their 20th anniversary, and they're all about having a great time while enjoying, enjoying amazing clean food. After three months of being closed, they're now open for deliveries. Get in touch with them and order some great fucking food at www.theorganicgrill.com. Keeping it moving and grooving. Let me see who else, anybody out there. Jill, I've been watching on my boat. Well, I hope uh, greetings from us landlubbers. I hope uh, things are well out on the, out on the boat, Jill. Be, be careful. Uh, I'm still stranded down here in, in Florida. Uh, Want to shout out Pitchfork uh, Clothing and, uh, and such. Also want to shout out Jonathan Buskey. Uh, where's my busky stuff, man? Where's my busky? Where's my busky stuff at? Hold on, hold on. Got the busky stuff. The New York hardcore alphabet with all with the cool legend that can be picked up at www.busky.bigcartel.com. Also, of course, the artwork behind me, the infamous, the beautiful Christine Cambria, www cambria.com. Her art is incredible. Go check it out. Um, the throwback shirts are on sale. The A7 throwback shirts, they're at www.stonefilmsnyc.com. So get down with that. Uh, I think that covers also, uh, listen, I know, I know I'm preaching to the converted here once again, but follow me on Instagram at stonefilmsnyc. That's the direct conduit to the show. So, yes, if you have one of these communication devices here on your tour of the planet Earth at Stone Films NYC, follow me there. God, I think I, you know, I do a lot of shows and I'm like, fuck, I forgot this. I forgot that. So I'm trying not to forget anything. Upcoming shows we have next up is next up is Michael Graves. Then next week we have Dave Smalley. Coming up, stoked on that. Then Friday of next week, we have Lukey Luke from Warzone. Bam, kind of stoked on that. Kind of stoked on that as well. And then just announced today, the old school Boston hardcore show number two with Christina Lee McCarthy, who was who's an OG Boston hardcore. Uh, listen, you know what's cool about this show? We're getting. We're getting a, a, a woman on the show. We're getting a girl on the show. You know, we've got a lot of dudes on this show. Got to get some more females of the species on this show. I'm trying. I like girls. I don't know about you, but just speaking for me, I like girls. So I'm glad to have more girls on this show. So there you go. Christina Lee McCarthy coming on the show. OG Boston Hardcore Show number two. You might have seen her in Beverly Hills 90210 or in Child's Play 2. She's on a bunch of stuff. We have a lot to talk about. She's super cool. It's going to be very enjoyable. Uh, yes, there's no girls on the internet, right? Get get Madonna on. Sure, no problem. Um, Madonna will come on the show. No, Maybe she can come on the show and talk about the Kabbalah, huh? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Yes, it's been a bit of a sausage fest so far. I know, bro. I'm, try I'm trying to break these chains, break these shackles, break these chains. You know? So, yes, I know. They're a girl checking in, you know? Uh, what else? Gina B. Gina B., you know, she's a girl. Get Karen Crisis on. You know, Karen Crisis, that's not a bad suggestion. 
Um, I would like to talk to Karen Crisis on this show. Um, she's an interesting person. Um, maybe I'll do that. That 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 could happen. Um, who signed Rage Against the Machine? Who? Karen Crisis? Madonna? Who are you talking about? Um, so there you go. Any questions? We're gonna head it down the home stretch here. Um, please, any questions for our guest today, Mark Rizzo? Um, oh, Madonna signed Rage. Is that right? Madonna signed Rage Against the Machine? Was was Rage Against the Machine on Maverick? I did not know that. I did not know that. Interesting. Kira, as in Kira who played for Black Flag? That's a possibility. Um, but yeah, you know, I read, I, you know, I, I got a, a couple, couple things on up my, I have a couple things up my sleeve. So, so there you go. Uh, also, listen, I want to, oh, yes, I remembered. Thank God. I finally fucking remembered. I always wanted to put this up there. Hey, uh, for those that are still sitting at home and wondering what to do, I got a couple of films that are out there uh, that I directed. Uh, if you're home and uh, need something to watch, uh, who the fuck is that guy? The Fabulous Journey of Michael Lago is still on Netflix as well as Amazon. The New York Hardcore Chronicles film, I believe, is on Amazon Prime, on YouTube and Apple TV. Uh, the New York Hardcore Chronicles film 1.5, which is a bit of a sequel to that other to the first film. That, I believe, is on regular Amazon. I think you got to pay a couple bucks for that. And XXX All Ages XXX, the Boston hardcore film, is on Amazon Prime. So if you have Amazon Prime, you can watch a couple of these films. It's included. Uh, if you have Netflix, watch Who the Fuck Is That Guy? Uh, these are films I directed, and I think you will enjoy them. So there you go. Um, here we go. Duh, 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 duh. That said, let's bring on our friend Mark Rizzo. Hi, Mark. What's up? You know, just going, just, you know, I, I'm calm. I have a, I like a calm demeanor today for the most part, you know? You, you, you sort of bring an aura of calmness to the show, bro. Right on, man. The weekend's <laughs> here. So it's time to chill, right? Yeah, no, it's, well, sometimes the shows get stressed out, man, you know? You know, I, I like, I gotta, I gotta say that I like doing a show when it's like one person and, and I can interact and it's not like, you know, mm. fucking, fucking chaos all over the place. So uh, tell us, you know, what's, what does the future hold lo looking ahead? Uh, well, I'm trying to see, you know, when, when we can, I, I can get back out there and do some gigs uh, on my own, you know, cause when I am home from tour from Soulfly, then I go out and do my solo gigs. Yeah. Uh, so just talking to my guy that, that, that books me and we're, we're just waiting to see we're we're starting to get some offers for possibly, um, maybe August down in Texas, you know, or out in the Midwest or something. I think things are starting to, to lighten up there a bit from what I heard. So I'm just waiting to see. Otherwise, um, as far as Soulfly, I really don't know, man. It, it could be, you know, a lot longer maybe. Um, so I'm just doing a lot of my online stuff. You know, people can follow me on Patreon um, where I'm doing tons of live feeds and, um, and the guitar lesson thing, you know, if anyone's interested in, in learning some stuff. And, uh, you know, the minute I get the, the green light, man, I'll be out there doing at least uh, my solo gigs up and down the East Coast and wherever else I can, I can get out to. Here's an interesting question from Jerry Boland. Uh, does one person book all your global shows? Curious how the international tours get put together. It's a very good question. Um, well, for me, with my solo stuff, I have I have a guy that books me basically just in the States. Uh, if we get offers for for outside of the country um you know we try to work that out too i don't i don't you know i don't have that that many opportunities you know other than to go to colombia a lot i've been to dominican republic to do some solo gigs um but yeah i'm trying to branch out you know but people can message me also facebook instagram you know and then i could get you in contact with the, the right people to, to get me out to these places uh from christian hope you include sweden next time you hit europe yeah, me too, man. It's always a good time. I should I should be there right now. You know, we were supposed to be in Europe this entire summer doing all the festivals, and uh, it all got canceled. Yeah, it's it's a it's a uh, it's a, it's a strange time, man. It's yep. a strange time. Uh, let me bring on uh, let me bring on a couple of my guys, and uh, we'll banter about a uh, banter about a little bit, and we'll uh, we'll say our goodbyes, man. Um, let me get all these banners off. Let's bring on uh, Rap Bones. What's up, bro? What's up, Mark? 
What's up, rap boys? Steven. Hey, Steven. Uh, please force Steve. What's up? How you doing? Too much, yo, too much background noise for you, Steven. Steven's up when you live Steven's out. Too much back. Too much background noise. So what's happening, Rat Bones? Any questions for Mark or anything? Uh, yeah, I actually have a question. I asked it a couple of times. I don't know if you got to it. There was a lot of uh, questions coming in. Uh, did you ever uh, tour with the uh, Nail Bomb? Yeah, Stop. well, we uh, three years ago, about three, four years ago, we did uh, the Nail Bomb record in its entirety. Um, played wow. with, with Max, you know, with Soulfly, basically. It wasn't with uh, Alex Newport. He, uh, I think he turned it down for, for some reason. But we went out, you know, as Soulfly. Wow. And uh, and Max's son, Igor, his youngest son, did all the uh, programming stuff that's on that record and did wow. the Alex Newport's uh, vocal parts. So, so cool. brutal. Yeah, that was awesome. So, like, I, I think when I heard Nail Bomb, it was like the first time I heard Slayer again. <laughs> you know, like yeah. that feeling really you got the first time you heard Slayer, like when you heard Nail Bomb, it was like, yo, this is like, hey, oh, yeah. shit out, kid. Oh, yeah. It's a classic record, man. It was fun to play. Yeah, I mean, again too. I caught them at Gramercy. I think I caught you. Were you? What, did you play Gramercy here in New York? Yeah, we did, yeah, we did Gramercy about three, two or three years ago. Nice, I was there. Okay. Nice. What's this? Hey, Rat Bones, about the uh, ask Rat about the Seduce record behind him. Yeah, man, that's like I always talk about Halloween from Detroit, but this was the other big bombastic band from Detroit, man. Halloween in Detroit and Seduce in Detroit were like the battling bands, bro. Wow, look at those flying V's. Look at those flying V's, bro. Wow. My lights are fucked up. There it is. Nice. It, yeah, looks, like a, it looks like a band. It looks like a band of Vinnie Vincents, you know? <laughs> yeah, they were they were like big talent, like never really broke uh they were in the decline of the western civilization too i believe oh. years but yeah you know, like those were my brothers you know uh, when i was coming up on the streets of detroit man those were the bands i was going to see in the metal years you know before the punk really set in you know uh. hey mark here's a question from our good friend pablo chavez a question for mark what's your favorite soul fly record what's up pablo i think he's down in argentina i think i know yeah. pablo man. Mm -hmm. he is down yep. there Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite Soulfly record, I always say, is uh, Enslaved. I love that record. We did it with one of my favorite producers to work with, which is Zeus, who's done tons of New York hardcore records. You know, I think he just did he just did that last uh, Blood Clot record. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so Zeus is one of my favorite producers to work with, man. And that record, I think we really, really got back to the the old school Sepultura thrash sound and beyond. You know, it's got some of my my best guitar playing on it. And I think some of Max's best stuff and, and um, definitely Enslaved. That's my favorite one. Cool. That, that's great. Must have been, uh, it must have been really interesting when the Cavalera brothers got back together and started playing. I mean, you were around for all that, right? Dude, it was like that was another highlight of, uh, of, of my career, you know, was, was I was in Soulfly. And then I got the word. It was back in 06. Uh, the word was that, you know, Igor and Max were talking again and they, they wanted to start a project. So Igor just showed up to one of our Soulfly shows in Phoenix and we played Roots and I think Attitude, you know, two songs off of the Roots record and the crowd went bananas, obviously. And, yeah. um, and then a year later, we went into the studio. They asked me to play guitar and we did the Cavalier Conspiracy, man. And, and uh, that's that record, that first Cavalier Conspiracy record inflicted is like, that's one of my favorite records also that I, I ever made, man. It's, it's like a throwback to Sepultura, Chaos AD and, and beyond again, you know, it, that, that was incredible. And then we did a full worldwide tour. It, did wow. all the festivals and it, it was, it was, we actually, uh, it was us and Rage Against the Machine were on a lot as their first wow. reunion. Uh, we opened up for Kiss at Grass Pop in Belgium. I mean, it was, just, it was in 2008. It was nuts. Actually, the New York City show was crazy. We did Irvin Plaza two nights back to back, and that was out of control, man. That show was nuts. That's awesome. I mean, you know, I, I think. You know, in a band like uh, like Soulfly, um, the, the the they call they they for those that may not know, they call it a, 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 a I guess it's a, a touring cycle. You know, uh, like the whole cycle of you know writing the record, recording the record, you doing the video for the record, putting the record out, playing a couple shows to sort of chum the waters, and then going out there once, going out there twice, and then you kind of go out there a third time. These cycles usually. Uh, take about two years correct 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I, I <laughs> we're always on the road, man. I mean, I'm literally the last 17 years of my life. I, if you really had a, I, I probably was home in Jersey, maybe two months out of the year, a month and a half. I mean, constantly on the road and then I'm addicted to it, you know? So when I am off the road from, from Soulfly, I at least minimum do my solo gigs on the weekends. You know, I'll jump in my car and just do little bars up and down the East coast or wherever, you know, around the country, jump on a flight, you know? That's, that's awesome. And like, like we talked about when, when the dust settles here and uh, you know, we get our a seven shows happening, you have to come down and be our guest at the a seven. And, and it, even if it's you with your pre-recorded shit, you know, and just, and just play, man, you know, awesome. we, we, you, we want to have, you have to come down, man. I would love to do it. That'd be great. It'd be an honor. Yeah. Uh, here's, here's a, a, a couple more here and we're going to head out in a couple minutes uh, from Oleg D. Uh, which Soulfly lineup was the best for you to play with? Now, I guess there's been some fluctuation in Soulfly with, with what drummers and bass players. Yeah. We've had a lot of different members. Um, I've been in a band, you know, 17 years straight now. Um, you know, I think, I think every lineup was, was special. You know, this one we got now is really great. We got a great bass player, Mike, um, who plays with us, who's a shredder. Um, you know, before him, we had Tony Campos on bass. He's, he's a shredder. He plays for Static X and yes, of course. We've had some great drummers over the years. Our, our, you know, Max's son plays drums with us right now. He's awesome. Our old drummer, Joe Nunez was great. Uh, the kid we had before. I mean, it, it's just, it's always great, man. I think every lineup was good. Even the lineups before I joined the band, you know, you had Roy Mayorga. Yeah. You know, he's right. for Nordia, right? And he's in Stone Sour now. Was he's Logan, in, was Logan in the band? Logan was in the band, you know, Mikey uh, Dolan from Snot. Yeah, I mean, yeah I, sure. I, Mikey I, was in, right. Yep. Yeah. Before I joined, you know, I mean, every lineup had uh, a great, great music, you know, so I'm, I'm a fan of the band for every lineup. Here's a question from our friend, Phil B. Um, perks and down. Perks and downside of touring. Uh, good question. Yeah, just you know, not being not being uh, around my family as much as I would like to be. You know, I'm always away. Um, you know, the years go by real fast when you're on the road like this. It's real hard to try to have a relationship. You know, um, you know, it's tough trying to keep a girlfriend. You know, at home when you're constantly on the road and they have a lot of suspicions and questions for you. You know, so. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, that's the downside, but it's also a lot of fun, man. It's a, it's a, just a real good time, you know? I mean, it, it's, uh, I think for, you know, I've done it on a somewhat limited basis, been around the world a couple of times, uh, touring or, 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 or even in the past couple of years, my films have screened around the world and I've, I've traveled the world and my perception, which is that, you know, you're, you're out a lot, and there become certain cities where you have friends and you look forward to showing up there and, and yeah. wow, we're going to Antwerp, you know, uh, you know, tomorrow. Yeah. I get to see, you know, Anne and, and Wim and, and, and yeah. I, you know, so, and you just build up like a real touring family and it's not for everyone. That's for sure. It's not, that means some people, some, some people, you know, uh, you know, crack after a while and it, they, that's not the life they want but there's there's a few people a very special few people that really really take to it and just love it on the road and love being and seeing the world man that there's there's there is a contingent of people that they really love it you know yeah yeah i do i do it's it's uh it's you know growing up working construction here in jersey you know yeah. to be able to do, do music for a living man it's it's like a paid vacation i tell people man i'm very lucky and fortunate that's great, man. And, uh, you know, it just, it's just a great story, man. I, I just love it. And I, I just love how, you know, you, you really, you, you have a love for the music and you slogged it out and you, you played in a couple local bands and, and, uh, you know, you did that tour with Soulfly and, and, you know, you caught someone's eye and, and when they needed somebody, you got the call and, and you stepped in there with your great work ethic and you've really made quite quite a career for yourself and I, I just i just i respect you and I, I just love your work man thank you drew same here to you man big fan of the show and everything you've done thank you man and thanks for being a part of it and let's keep in touch and when things when things uh get rolling uh, we'll see you down at the a7 yeah definitely man i'd be totally excited to do it man it's great to be on the show big fan thank you bro i'll talk to you right, soon thanks, Drew. good talking rap bones have a good one man Sal, Mark. have a great day man thanks All a lot right. thank you guys well, there you have it. There's Mark Rizzo from the Cavalera Conspiracy and from Soulfly and formerly of El Nino 
wow, what a great story. Uh, what a great guy. And what, what a fantastic uh, guitar player. I hope everybody around the world enjoyed the, today's show. Um, we have, um, what else we got? That was cool, right? Sure. Yeah, man. Jersey yeah. guy. How about that? A Jersey guy. Yeah. Who knew? You know? I mean, and he grew up in Karlstadt next to Lodi, bro, which is like Misfits, Misfits country, you know? So, yeah. the, you know, that was cool. That was cool. So, all yeah. right, man. I'm a Jersey guy. I get a lot of shit, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I live here. <laughs> yep. Hey, you know what? I want to mention to the people that are watching that we're, we're in the – we're in the process of putting this show together here. This is a special, this is going to be a special Patreon show. Uh, although it's, uh, we're, we're trying to figure out the date. We're trying to coordinate it. Uh, but we're going to have a, for Patreons only for people that are on my Patreon page, uh, a show, private show with uh, me, rap bone, Sid, and, uh, basically it's an opportunity to really kind of get into, um, you know, talk about some stuff that I don't get to talk about on the show, you know, about, you know, Sid's music and rap bones and his background and, and Steven's photography and what got him into it. So just want to give everybody a heads up that, that, uh, this show's coming up and, and, and I'll announce it. We're just trying to figure out schedule, schedule wise. And if you're not on Patreon, uh, here it is. Uh, you can, you can get on and be a part of it. It's two bucks. It's Two bucks. It's two bucks. So two bucks a month, that is. But uh, come support the show. There's different tiers. Go check it out. Just go check it out. What the hell else are you doing in the zombie apocalypse? Just go Just go check it out. So uh, th that's coming your way. And uh, that's it. I'll see you on um, Rap Bones. I'll see you on Sunday for Michael Graves, huh? It's gonna be a banger. Yeah, it should, it should be. Uh, it should be interesting, right? Absolutely. I got to see them a lot. I got the shirt alive and well. Yo, uh, man, I, 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 I hall. Did you go to that alive and well ninety eight? Uh, hold on. Oh, oh, you want to go there? I got the shirt. Break oh, it oh, okay. Hold on. I got. Where is that? I got. I got. I got to get into my. Hold on, hold on. And I was a little like, yeah, Michael Gray, but I liked it. It sounded good. I have, I, yeah, I got, I got, I got pictures from that. Of uh, there's one real great one. Hold on, I gotta find this thing. Hold on, be patient, will you? Um, where is that? Where is that? What's this? Drew Stone, Boston Mike. Wow, look what this one just came up. How about this one that just came up in my archive? Hoya, Boston Mike, me, Dino, Dino from Fear Factory, and Johnny from Spine Shack. What? Right. Boston <laughs> Mike. Boston Mike, man, huh? Wow. I got I got a great shot from, from that. Let me let me look for it again. Um from that uh I have to I have to dig it out. That's why that's why I need your support so I could friggin' spend all day uh you know work working on these. Working on these shows. Let's see if it'll come. Up. Nah. All right. I'll have to bring it up at, at the. But yeah, I remember that was at the that was at the um, the convention hall in Asbury Park. Yeah, that was a great day. And I the miss the Misfits headline man? I believe so. Every New York band played. I believe that was the ninety six or ninety eight. I can't remember the exact year, but. I came off tour of Murphy's Law. We rolled off of a, a, a whole country tour to that show. It was like an epic way to end the tour. It was nuts. Hey, here, here's here's a little sneak here's a little sneak peek of the next show with Michael Graves. Here's a shot of me and and the Misfits um, when I was opening in Europe. The show I opened a couple shows in Europe for the Misfits playing solo acoustic guitar. And what drummer is that? That's Chud on the right. Chud, right. That's that's Chud on the right. So that was me. That was that's me with the twelve string acoustic. So it's, it's, 
Is that mm -hmm. the beginning of the Drew Stone hit squad? But it kind of, it kind of is. It, it kind of is. It's, it started as a dare. It sure. started as a dare because those guys, we, we would, you know, um, I was managing Sub Zero and they were, and they were on the, the tour, and I was out with them, and there was that acoustic guitar backstage, and one of the misfits dared me to do it. They dared me to get out there in front of a, an Italian punk rock crowd, a hostile Italian punk rock right. crowd, to go out there and 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 play acoustic. And I and I took up the dare and I did it, and they loved it, and it was it was epic. And then after that, I, a savage beast with your acoustic. Friend. Yeah, it was crazy. And then after that, hold on, I'm look, I'm looking for another picture from that. Um, uh, let me see. Now after that, I, I after that I started doing it more often, and it, it turned out to be a lot of fun. We're going to talk about that on the Michael Graves show. We're going to talk a lot about talk about a lot of stuff on the Michael Graves show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully, we don't get into any. Uh, did the audience kill you? No, no, it went over really well. Um, you know, uh, yeah, this keeps you a V for vendetta, exactly. Um, yeah, here you go, uh, Todd Hamilton, August of '98, Asbury Convention Center. Yep, that, that's 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 what it was. You know, that's exactly that's exactly what it was. But no, uh, the acoustic dick. Thing went over. Wait, I got. I got to find. Let me look. Let me look for. Uh, here it is. Here it is. And this. I'll, I'll, I'll post this during the Grave Show. I shouldn't be getting into it now. But here's from that same tour. This is me playing. This is me opening for the Misfits. And that's Michael Graves who came out and sang sang with me. Did a song with me with no makeup on. And people were just dumbfounded by by the whole thing. And and I did I did cool shit. I did like Woody Guthrie and. You know some other crazy shit, and it went over really well. Music is universal. Music is universal, and what's more punk rock than getting in front of a hostile Italian crowd with an acoustic guitar? Right? Wait, Alice's restaurant? Uh, no, Woody Guthrie. Oh, that's Woody. Arlo Guthrie. That's yeah. Arlo Guthrie's his son. That's right. That's right. Close, close. Right. So, all right, man. Uh, we'll talk, and um, we'll uh, we'll figure out uh, for the great show, and we'll figure out our private show. And we're also talking about doing a Detroit show, right? I yeah, I would like to put together a Detroit show, man. I got a, a lot of heart for Detroit. All my people in Detroit, if you've been watching, love all you people, miss you guys a lot. Well, all right, we're in Detroit, like they don't all like me out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you keep it spicy. We'll see yeah. you soon, buddy. All right, later, guys. Take care. Well, there you go, Rap Bones. Um, not everyone loves him in Detroit, apparently. Uh, I want to thank everybody for listening to the show today. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a nice kind of calm show, and uh, I like having a nice calm show every once in a while. So uh, I'll see you on Sunday. I'll see everybody on Sunday. Uh, for Michael Graves, do good things, and good things will come to you.